Uh, today, I am joined by Christina Holtkrantz, and she is the designer behind the brand Emma Chris Christina. Mm -hmm. And once you see her designs, you are going to fall in love too, because it's like this bubblegum, pink, fantasy, pastel, girly. You can see in her background, she has some of her art, and I can't get enough of it. So um, besides you know, illustrating and also she's represented by Pink Light Studio. Uh, Christina is a top teacher on Skillshare as well. So we have a lot to talk about today. So I can't wait to dig in. Um, hi, Christina. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Of course. This um, is fun. Can you, first of all, briefly just tell us how you got into illustration and surface pattern design? Right. So I was the quiet art kid all my, my whole childhood. In school, I was always doing the projects where I could add in art. So then I went to art school at university. I did oil painting and traditional drawing for four years. This is in America because I was grown up. I grew up in America. And I went to a state school in Florida because I got a full scholarship to a full uh, to a state school. Awesome. And I got into the, the fancy Floridian illustration school, but the thought of like free university education or $26,000 a year for four years. I was yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I'll go with painting. <laughs> Perfect. Even though I was more interested, I think my skill set was suited to illustration, but debt free was just like, yeah, just so smart. So after that, when I graduated after four years of oil painting, I was like, I don't even like oil painting. It's so messy and it takes like six months to dry. So, and then I lived in Florida. So I had a, a, in the trunk of my car, I just had piles of paintings that were just like melted together pretty much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I, pretty much like on graduation day, I was like, what do I do now? I still want to do art and things. So I was like, illustration was that thing that's commercial and they seem to get jobs. So I taught myself Photoshop and Illustrator and opened an Etsy shop. And then I sold art prints. And then I started getting requests for custom art. And that's how the balls started rolling. Oh, awesome. That's so interesting. And mm -hmm. I have to know, I've been very curious where Emma Christina comes from, the brand name. Yeah, my name's Christina Emma. But my whole life, my mom's always been like regret that I should have been called Emma Christina. Hmm. She thinks it has a better ring to it. Oh, okay. So you just <laughs> decided thought, to mix it up. I thought it was like, it was my girly alter ego. Oh, so I, I love that. As, as girly as I wanted in my art, I could be Emma Christina instead of Christina Emma Holtkrantz. I like that. That's awesome. And then, yeah. And then I always had problems with my last name in America. So I was, I don't want to have my name as the as my brand yeah i understand i understand i have a very easy last name but um my married name is not so easy and so mm -hmm. yeah i stuck with my maiden name because i never had to explain my name until i got married and then i'm like spelling it every time and i'm like what a pain and it's a short <laughs> name but it's just fergal it's just you know people uh -huh. mispronounce it and people misspell it and it's just annoying so stick with <laughs> elizabeth silver it's very easy mm -hmm. um so, uh, so when I was digging into your work and everything, and I saw that you were represented by Pink Light Studio, which is an agency that represents so many talented, talented illustrators. And, you know, I get asked all the time. I'm also, I'm rep represented by Jewel Branding, but, you know, we both have agents and I'm asked all the time about working with an agent. How do I get an agent? Should I get an agent? Um, and so I was curious, did you license your work before you uh, signed with Pink Light and then you decided to get the kind of the extra help or how did that kind of come about? Yeah, exactly. I went to Certex myself, not by myself, with the Art Collective in 2017. Mm. And then we signed on at the time with another agent, didn't have a good experience with her. Uh, after a year we signed off with that we stopped with the collective and I still had this dream of like I was thought that having an agent would help my career I wanted to have one even though I had a bad experience she did nothing 
Uh, <laughs> and uh, so I signed on with Pink Light. I contacted them and she happily took me in. And though I haven't had like the lucrative positive experience, like I wish, I wish I was getting deals left and right. But I also signed on at the end, of, at the middle of 2019. Then we had 2020. So oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you haven't had like a chance. I haven't had a chance yet. So yeah. I can't really say. But so far, my experience is so positive just to have somebody to jump ideas, ball ideas with. And yeah. the group aspect of having an agency, we have calls every other week with the whole group. So we can talk about trends and things that we're working on and what kind of art they would like in the portfolio. and. I just like that aspect. And then the aspect of knowing that I have to turn in art every month, like two collections every month I have to do. So it makes me make art, even though they're not mm. selling, I'm still making it. And I'm, I swear I'm getting better because I'm constantly making stuff. Yes, yes. All of that is so important. I think it's interesting about the, um, to that you guys meet as a as a agency so like I've actually talked to some other artists who do that with their agencies I know that that's kind of like a common thing my agency is pretty big and we do like a quarterly webinar where we're all kind of like our faces are there but they're more mm -hmm. presenting like you know trends and talking about things that are relevant to what what's happening in our agency but like it's not so much of a conversation because we have like 50 artists or if not, <laughs> a few more. Um, mm -hmm. So, but I, I love that um, the idea of sort of having that community through your agency, which I don't think, you know, what I've learned talking to other people with agents is that every experience is so, so different and every agency is so, so different. So like, that is something that I would never have thought to like ask about, you know, to say if, if that was something I was looking for, you know, I wouldn't have thought that that would be offered through an agency. But now seeing that more and more people I've heard of do that, you know, that's something to consider when you're looking for an agent. Yeah, it's not just that they're doing all the work for you for the marketing aspect. That's awesome but you can't rely on them to bring in all the deals and everything for you. You make such a good point that you cannot rely on your agent to be fully your, you know, your income and not have any, any participation in it. And creating that new artwork is such a valuable experience. Um, so I, I think that that's great that you're having, having that with, with pink light. And I think that it does, as I was talking last, last interview I did was with Nicole Tamarin and she was saying that it takes like three years basically. And, and I have heard that too. So even yeah. if it wasn't 2020 last year, it does take a while to get started and start having that money come in and those deals come in and stuff like that. So hopefully you'll start to start to see that more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> yes, definitely. So um, you were just saying at the beginning in your interview that you, I mean, intro that you were raised in America, but now you live in Sweden. Um, and so I get a lot of international students who reach out to me before, well, they're not students yet. And they reach out to me about my class and say, does this apply to me because, you know, is it all based on American everything? And I'm always very upfront that, you know, my experience is an American experience. I cannot speak for international, you know, I don't know what works exactly for, for international markets. However, I've had a lot of international students and they've had success with my, you know, classes and my techniques and stuff like that. So I think that it does work for other places, but it certainly is more focused on my point of view, of course. Um, mm -hmm. So my question is, do you work more with European companies or US companies or, you know, sort of how, how do you, what are you, what's your client base look like? It's majority American clients. Hmm. Okay. I think that's mainly because I have tried because I did grow up in America and that's where I know I know all those companies like Target and American Greetings and Hallmark and all those things and when I moved to Sweden I didn't know I don't know any of these brands mm. so it, it, but um, for international I have worked with different clients in Europe and in America but my client base is mainly American maybe 75 percent 
not sure and then lots of uk and australia because of the english you know and then sweden right. of course i have so i did work and i work here too and i would say it's the majority of countries that i know of and think about they mimic the american market everybody wants to have the same success as america does and the same kind of products and things like that so i think it's it's definitely like moving over across mm. the seas uh, one thing I have noticed that in Europe or definitely in Sweden, licensing isn't a thing. Oh, okay. Companies aren't looking for art that you already have in your portfolio. And the majority of the work that I get is on commission. They want something custom for them. Mm. That is what I've noticed. But maybe that's also just the jobs that I've done. But I have licensed a few designs. I licensed when I did a, a coloring book. They just licensed the designs and now I've licensed some designs that I did for that coloring book to a, a calendar company and things like that. So I think you can introduce the concept of licensing, like mm -hmm. teach your clients about it. I've had friends who've done that here in Sweden too. They've learned about licensing and they've like introduced the concept to different people. Yeah. I see. Yeah, there's I mean, there's always that education aspect of working with new clients. Right. Um, that is interesting. So when I can see why that would be true, I, I can see how the American model, because like, you know, we're just so retail heavy and it's just like such, you know, people just like materialism kind of in the American way is sort of sort of a thing. But, you know, when I was working in house, we were always looking to Europe for trends and for what was next and what was new. So things, you know, different markets definitely have different um, looks and and I feel like um, a Europe traditionally has been, you know, more fashion forward, um, you know, obviously like Paris Fashion Week and all that kind of stuff is more, um, you know, revered and, and we, Heim Techs is a big uh, show that, you know, has like furniture and home decor mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And that is always sort of like cutting edge. That was something that all my art directors were always like attending in order to kind of figure out what was next. Um, so in Sweden, we have four mix, it's called. Oh, okay. I've had my work there too. So cool. So would you say like, what is what besides the licensing thing do is there any other differences um between working with american clients versus you know european or swedish clients or no because really? i would say if you learn how to pitch your work i think that would be really impressive to the uh, european market uh a portfolio building up even if you have a licensing portfolio it still can be used as a traditional portfolio as like examples of what you can oh, do mm -hmm, so even definitely. if they don't want to purchase something uh, like directly they mm -hmm. can say i want something like this and this like you're showing in your portfolio so all that kind of stuff works so i no, i can't really think of Okay. Specific things like that. No, I think I think you're good with your class. You. We're international. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. Yes. Yeah, pitching in your portfolio. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe you have to is. think about money. I, you yeah, have to and payment and taxes. That's the part that gets kind of complicated. And I don't yeah. really get into that. In my, I mean, I talk a little bit about pricing, but I don't talk about you know I don't get into the nitty gritty of that kind of stuff in in my current class. Um, but yeah, that is something that, that comes up of like, how do you get paid? I always see that in artist groups of like, you know, payment transfers and all that kind of different stuff that gets kind of tricky. Yeah. But for the most, I've never had any trouble. That's PayPal good. has been really good. They take a fee, but whatever, like you get yeah. the money. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Okay. Well, that is very interesting. Yeah. Um, so moving on to another very interesting topic is um, you are a top Skillshare teacher. So congratulations. Um, I will honor. put a link in the description <laughs> to all your uh, or to your classes so people can check them out. And you teach on like creative business and art, um, like service pattern techniques and, you know, art techniques and just the whole range. You have a ton of classes and um and looks, you know, like definitely a wealth of knowledge coming from your channel. <laughs> um, and so Skillshare is sort of a topic that I have, uh, you know, some strong opinions about. And 
I haven't really had the chance to talk about them much. So this is kind of the perfect opportunity. I'm going to, I'm excited to kind of hear your, your thoughts as well. And for me, like I do have a few classes on Skillshare and to be honest, I never really took off on the platform, you know? And so maybe if I did have some like massive success, I'd be singing, I probably, I'm sure I'd be singing a different <laughs> tune, but <laughs> Yeah. Um, currently I have four classes and I think in the last like three years I've made like $3,000, $4,000 total, total. Um, now I know that top teachers, I know some top teachers and I know that they can make that much in a month. So there can be a big difference in, in income depending. Um, and so, but my personal opinion on Skillshare is that, you know, it's a great tool to sort of learn how to teach, right? Or, you know, how, what your audience could respond to, to potentially grow an audience, but to do classes that are really long and in depth. And I don't know that this is not, of course, directed at you. I, I don't know exactly the length of your class or anything like that, but, but, you know, some, like, I see some really in-depth courses that are clearly like, you know, hours and well thought out and taken so long to make put on Skillshare and you know at the end of the day you make you know whatever six cents a minute or something like that so a three-hour class that's a huge huge class and you can teach so much in that time but that's you know whatever three dollars or something I don't know my math isn't perfect but <laughs> but you know what I mean like it's not very much and I understand that quantity over like you know quantity of students you can get way more students because you have that Skillshare um, thing to bounce you know you have the Skillshare audience but I feel like it's, it does such a dis disservice to the teachers because you guys are putting in so much work and to stay on top of their sort of like search algorithm, you kind of have to keep releasing new classes constantly. And it just feels like you're on a hamster wheel. And so that's why I decided to not get too much deeper into that hamster wheel and start putting my classes on, um, you know, my, well, on Teachable, but it's like my own platform that I can, mm -hmm. you know, but there's the differences I have to bring in my own audience, which is a whole nother thing. So all that to say, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that, mo about the Skillshare model? Like how, obviously it's been working for you, but do you have, what do you, what are your thoughts on that? No, I totally agree. My love for Skillshare goes a little like up and down, up and down through the, I've been on the platform for three years, I think, two and a half, three. And it, I get so frustrated sometimes with it just cause, so like you say, just six cents, five cents. It's not fair. I, I was distraught when they did the, when the pandemic started and I did so many campaigns that they gave thousands of free, uh, memberships to so many people that we made two cents a minute. I, yes, I have, like I said, I have some friends who are, that I've chatted with and I remember yeah. when that happened. I, didn't, like, I wasn't okay. paying attention, but they, you know, I mean, I have heard that and it was, yeah, everyone was not pleased about that. So everybody was, I was like jumping ship and like, why do I put in the time to do this? But then I realized just how for the moment, it's really simple for me. Mm. I can put up classes and build my audience and test it out. And I'm not the one of the top teachers who has a film crew. There's mm. plenty of the top teachers who have film crews. They spend months creating their classes. I take a usually like one day to film and a couple of days to edit. And I slap that thing on Skillshare. <laughs> yeah that well that's how uh, that's the amount of effort that I put into mine as well that are on Skillshare yeah. you know they're exactly. they're mini courses you know they're mm -hmm. meant to give you some information and help you like get, gain that skill but they're not an in-depth look in, at things so no so that's what I've had in my brain that I'm like growing my audience and for the moment I have small kids at home and it's I don't have the energy, I guess, or don't have the stamina to have one course that I'm going to be promoting all the time. But I want to maybe have that in the future. So I'm like cultivating. So I have my email newsletter and I have my Facebook group and things like that. So I just like, I'm having that, mm. I guess. And I have the opportunity to create a class. I just, I also have like, uh, like artistic breakdowns every other month where I'm like, oh, I should make a class. And they're like, no. 
<laughs> yes, I feel your pain on that one. I have been going back and forth with that too. It's really hard. And I think I hear that so much from artists who have become teachers about the struggle between wanting to create art and wanting to teach and feeling bad about teaching and not creating art or feeling bad about, or like being disappointed about creating art and not teaching because, you know, then that part is fall. Like the balance is very difficult. And yeah. so I can totally relate to that. And I feel like a sellout sometimes that I'm... Mm. This is what mm -hmm. I have. To, I had to like get through this too. Before I launched Start Your Service Pattern Business, when I was like, okay, 2020 was going to be, even before the pandemic, I was like, I'm launching a big class. It's going <laughs> to, I'm turning into like, I'm really like going for it. I've had classes before, but I'm going for it as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I really had to get over it because you know what? It's that one single phrase that everyone knows, those who can't teach. teach. Yeah, right? That has like, ruined oh. teachers, right? It yeah. has because you feel like, oh, you know, I'm just, you know, I can't do it. So I'm, I'm I can't hack it. So I'm teaching in order to whatever, make my money. That is and so true. I battled that all the time. But then I realized teaching has given me so much and I learned so much because I'm pushing myself to really get good at the things before I teach it. And I get mm -hmm. so passionate about it, mm -hmm. get so excited about sharing. So no, I like, that doesn't make sense. Even it's though we all true. heard yeah, it. Yeah, it's not true. Just, not true. just in case anyone's wondering, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, not true. true. Um, we do both. There are teachers, you know, I think, I think there's also teachers out there um, that, you know, have a lot more success teaching than they do necessarily in their art career. And there's nothing particularly wrong with that as long as you're upfront. But I think there are teachers maybe who potentially market in a way that makes it seem like they have this insane art career when it's more an insane teaching career. Mm -hmm. um, so- What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know anyone's behind the scene numbers, so I'm not talking about <laughs> anyone in specific, but, yeah. but I think that that is a common complaint that people, people have. Right. So, yeah. um, you know, and so you feel like you kind of have to keep your foot in, in, in the art world because you have to be, uh, well, first of all, you want to be keeping up and know what's actually going on. You don't want your information to be six years out of date or whatever, mm -hmm. but also, um, you know, you, you just, it feels like it's, it's such a balance and you want to be genuine. You always want to be genuine. Um, and, and so, yeah, I've really struggled with that as well. And the thing, another thing is that people say, um, this is just a, now a teacher therapy session. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> Cause I'm it. like, okay, so also here's my other problem. <laughs> we need it. No, but you know, so the other thing that I think is really interesting, and I'd love to hear your, your take on it, is that, you know, I think people, because so many people have become teachers, online teachers, um, there is this concept, uh, you know, this idea that teaching is sort of like the easy route. Like it's the easy money, let's say. Like getting recognized as an artist is hard. It's easy to throw something up on Skillshare and become a million dollar teacher or whatever. Like, which talk to me about that conception. There's, there's uh, 10,000 teachers on Skillshare. Yes. And there's a hundred top teachers. So, yeah. and the, these hundred top teachers us 120 or something, I think we are now maybe make up 40% of all of the views on the entire platform. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you can try to make a class and doesn't mean that you, you can, it's possible that you can be an awesome teacher. I didn't know that I was going to be a great teacher. It was one of those things like, oh, everybody's making a class. I'll do that. I'll try it. And I realized I enjoyed it. And then I got some views and that become, and then you get nice reviews as well. Like you're such a good teacher, Christina. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you're so good at explaining things. Like, no, I'm not. <laughs> but because communication is not my forte, but supposedly it is in the teacher space, which is nice to hear. 
So yeah, no, I don't think it's easy because there's so much that goes behind this, the scenes. You have to first have the knowledge to be able to teach. So you have to have experience that I've been doing this for over 10 years. Right. And then you have to have the willingness to share. Yes. And I have to be okay on a camera. Mm. And then you have to have the equipment and then you have mm. to like have the structure to do things. And then once that's all done, you have to like, promote it oh my and God, talk preach. about yourself all day. You have to listen to yourself mm -hmm. editing for like 50 hours. Mm -hmm. You have to yeah, just talk about yourself all the time. <laughs> and I have such a hard time with that. <laughs> <laughs> So no, it is, it, no, I'm, I'm so serious though. Like, I mean, I think people who, who, uh, follow me might think like, yeah, that I just do love to talk about myself, <laughs> but, <laughs> but like, uh, you know, no, it's not like, oh, this is super fun. Like, I can't wait to tell you how awesome I am. It's like, and, but you have to do that for an art career too, to be fair, if you're going to yeah. be working at home. And that's what I'm always reminding people. Like you have to get comfortable talking about how great you are even if you don't fully believe you're great, at least show ways that you can be helpful um, to an art director or in as a teacher, you know, or, you know, to other students. And so self-promotion, if you're going to work for yourself, you have to be okay with talking about yourself and self-promoting. That mm -hmm. is, that's like, you just have to be. And otherwise, probably get an in-house job or you could get an agent but even an agent you have to like promote yourself to get the agent you have to like it's not it's not a you know ticket out of promoting completely so you do have to be comfortable with that to I feel that's a real important skill but yeah. yes all those things that you listed exactly that's and and promoting is is sort of you know it depends on you know, Skillshare gives you a certain amount of a platform to promote um, in that they, you know, it will come up in the search easier kind of, especially as you're a top teacher. I think the algorithm will help you a little bit with that, but not, you know, I'm not, it, not, they, a, not they, at first, definitely they pick, not. They pick us. They like have a list and like every month they want to feature they have a certain amount. That's one thing that I really love about Skillshare. Again, same with my agent. We have this community. Mm. the top teachers we have a slack community mm. and we are on there talking to each other all day every day oh wow and we have like zoom calls again and we get so much support and we're like we're talking directly to the skillshare team so we know what's happening in the future and we know what we should be doing to improve they're like like giving us all the information mm. of how to succeed so mm. i don't know that's tough for a new a new exactly. teacher because you know yeah you know it's sort of like the rich get richer right of not right. necessarily money but just the idea of like you're already at the top so now you're learning how to be even better and even better so that is <laughs> that's a tricky thing to break into but yeah. I, I do like the Skillshare model even if you can't like as I, I'm not I've, obviously I'm not a top teacher I only have a few classes on there I don't have you know a million views or anything. Um, but I like it for, ha yeah, having that experimental, being able to put up your classes, see how pe real people re react to them and, and get that sort of feedback. It's sort of a good breeding ground. And I also like it for short, you know, single skill classes. Like I'm not necessarily going to release a class that, that's on my like teachable that's going to be, you know, 30 minute class about one very specific skill like that's mm -hmm. not necessarily but that would be a perfect thing to do for Skillshare right mm -hmm. totally. so there are definitely benefits benefits to it but um but certainly going off the platform is for me has been much more profitable um but I do know that top teachers make make a lot of money and we're gonna maybe dig into that a little bit in our bonus question later teaser <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, so I, yeah, I have just found that like, now that I've gotten into teaching more and have my own classes, I'm trying to build that audience. And so that means doing just a lot more of that type of work and I'm still doing client work. So it's a big balance and, and it, it, it isn't just like easy money. That's for sure. <laughs> no. And that's why I didn't want to do my class right now. I prefer since my kids are little, I'm, I'm trying to take it easy. I work, I don't work full time. Yeah, yeah. I took well, 10 weeks of vacation last year. 
That's good. I mean, well, last year, especially, I mean, I basically <laughs> took 10 weeks of vacation, but not, it was not a vacation. <laughs> yeah. um, so that brings us perfectly into our, my next question for you, which is that you do have young kids and I also have young kids. Um, mine are six and three. How old are your children? Two and four. Okay. Right. Perfect. So, um, <laughs> basically mine are two years apart too. The other one's turning four soon. So, mm -hmm. um, and that has been really tricky building a business as a mom. Um, there's a few reasons, but for me, I had a lot of issues with sort of the identity shift of being, to becoming a mom. And then suddenly like, I don't know, it was just, how that work that played into my like brand identity or my work or, or just like how I presented myself to clients or anything. Um, I had a kind of a hard time with that. And so I'm curious how you have navigated that or how kids has, have affected your, I mean, you know, I would assume if you didn't, all right, I'll stop talking. You tell, <laughs> you tell me, I'm like trying to put words in your mouth. Uh, well, obviously, having kids revolutionized my life before kids I was just like I'm co I was coasting through life I moved to Europe after growing up in America I am Swedish my parents are Swedish so it's easy for me to just move over here um I was coasting for like the first five years I uh started working full-time in 2010 uh, after getting not fired but like laid off our catering company went out of business so I was like oh I'll, I'll try being a full-time artist now yay but uh yeah I was just like wait I was so introverted I never pitched myself really I, I did that like twice a year I was like oh now I'm really gonna do something and I just let stuff like fall in my lap and you know whatever and then we my boyfriend he was a student at the time so we we're both just coasting and then we're like, oh, we should buy an apartment, have a family. And that was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I need to have a steady income now. I can't just like do whatever I want. So that's when I, I went to all the shows in Sweden, Formex. I signed up to Certex. I was like, we're going to do this. I got an agent. I structured my life. I like structured, I actually used a calendar and like, did things but then having a baby and being pregnant at the same time as trying to like fix my life my business mm -hmm. uh, you're exhausted all the mm -hmm. time so uh for the first one and a half years like my son he woke up like 20 times a night mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so I was exhausted I didn't get any sleep so I was trying to build my business at the same time it is not Which, easy. No. So then when I did find teaching, I could find something that was steady it er then constantly hustling to find clients. And that made it a little bit smoother. So I could work less, but still make the same amount or more. Mm. I like and having that. that expectation that I'm going to be working as much as the people on Instagram that don't have kids that I com mm. compare myself to yes. all the time. Yes. Okay. I can't. Let's get into so another good. therapy session. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it like that. So no. I'm just like taking a step back. I'm just doing my thing. I'm coasting in a different way with the with the kids stuff. Yeah. Doing yeah. As little as I can, but pushing my business forward in a smart way. Cause now I feel like I know what I'm doing at least. Mm, I love that girl. <laughs> uh, I can really, I can really relate to all of that. Um, like it, it's, it, it is, it's, it's so difficult and it's easy to compare, um, you know, people who are maybe at the same career level or the same, like obviously same industry, same, all that stuff. And you see this mm -hmm. stuff on Instagram and it's like, well, I remember before I had kids, it was like, I'm not, a per I don't have a ton of hobbies. So like, I like to watch TV and read, but I'm not like a person who's like, my, my husband has 1 million hobbies. Like he's like growing gardens and playing guitar <laughs> and like designing video games. And like, he has all this stuff. Me, I'm like, yeah, I'll be, check me at the Netflix. But like, <laughs> so when I, when I was working freelancing before I had kids, like 
if it's a Saturday afternoon and we're not like going anywhere, I'm like, oh, I'll do a little work or I'll do a little, like, I don't care. You know, that sounds fun. Like, I don't, I like my job. It's, it's okay. I can just, I'll have less to do this week. But now like weekends are definitely because the kids are home all the time and for the weekends. And um, yeah, so it's like, I, I don't have, basically once they get home from daycare and school, you know, I can't, you know, I can like respond to an email, but I can't really most of the time, unless it's like specific and I've set the time aside, I can't really get back on my computer and like do a quick like edit for a design or whatever, you know, it's, it's after bedtime for that. So my hours are limited when I can do certain things. And certainly during uh, the pandemic, they were both home for like, are your kids in daycare at all? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So my, my kids <laughs> are too, we're always in full-time daycare. And then for the pandemic, they were both home for six months fully. Mm. And that was insane. And, you know, and it, it was so, so hard. And it's like, oh, okay. Now the only time I have is literally is nap time is like, I have two hours in the middle of the day and not that they were sleeping, but I was like, you're going to your room and you're staying in your room <laughs> for two hours. Cause I have to do this, you know? Yeah. So it is really hard. And, um, you know, I think it is important that we, take a step back and when we're we're comparing ourselves that we remember that we have a it's not that other people who don't have kids don't have you know stressful situations in their lives obviously we mm -hmm. I don't know anyone's life I don't you know but but you know we do have for sure the these two little you know nuggets that are tr <laughs> tricky it's really tricky you know and it's a lot of energy right now at this stage especially Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've put kind of my big, big goals on hold. It's not important right now. I'm just, I'm 37 years old. I have plenty of time. Sometimes I swear my career started now. Like this is the first year that I am fully full time. I, I work like 35 hours, yeah. 35 hour weeks. And before that, my first five years were coasting. And then the next five years, I've been building my business like for real this time, <laughs> but with babies. Mm -hmm. which was like going uh, uphill battle, but I'm making it. So this year, I feel like it's the first year that I actually have a chance to do things. And I feel like I'm more equipped, but I'm taking it easy too, because with the pandemic, they send the kids home whenever they like yes. sneeze or yes. like, uh, yes, yes, like yes, any yes. like not visible mm -hmm. so they're home like every other second. So it's just like, I've tried to plan things in the calendar, but then just erasing it every other <laughs> Like, okay, never mind. Yeah, I can 100% relate to that. And it, and it's, it's funny, I actually just wrote a newsletter about this like a week, uh, a couple of weeks ago of like, I started this year wanting to be, wanting to be easy, kind of take it, not take it super easy, but I wanted to like find ways to, to not be super like driven, hustle, hustle, hustle because of the year that we just had because I needed a break and because like yeah the kids are still home like why try to like build an empire this year that was my thought I'm like I'm just gonna you know keep an even keel and do what I'm doing and hopefully improve as I go but you know but it's so hard to s stick with that because I get like you know yeah I have this comparison thing and I'm like oh, maybe I should release a new class, like, you know, or maybe I need to do, I need to do this, this, this to promote my class that I have never mm -hmm. tried before. So let me just put it together. Sure. Like, I just, you know, the, I just feel this internal pressure. And then I see my little kids and that are getting bigger and bigger and taller. And mm -hmm. I swear, I think my six-year-old called my husband bro yesterday, like, <laughs> Sometimes he cut, says girl to me. He's like, are you kidding me, girl? <laughs> so he's getting bigger and he's not a little, you know, chubby toddler. And it's like, what is the rush? You know, what is the rush? Can I just chill out and, you know, love on my little ones? And then when they are nine-year-olds that are smelly and say bro all the time, then they can go do their thing and I'll do my yeah. thing. Like, I don't... <laughs> exactly. That's my, that's my plan yeah do you have and they don't care about me anymore <laughs> yeah exactly and then I can make my empire too yeah 
Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a great way to prioritize. It's just hard. I find it hard to stick with that. That's the thing. I'm just so chill by nature. I have to like force myself to get out of like the, I'll just draw pictures all day and I'll paint this thing, even though I'm not a painter. <laughs> I have to like get myself to be like, no. So that's, I like putting a little structure. So every other Wednesday in my group, I do things. And then my newsletter I have to at least like do two stuff like that there's yeah. a couple rules I put myself into but I don't have like a set schedule that I have to do things I love that you you do seem very chill I'll say that yeah. <laughs> as you can tell I'm quite high energy <laughs> oh lord okay well that is awesome <laughs> I wish um, I could just like give you some I know I'd like to take some of that well I what I need to do is uh print out some of your artwork and put it up because it's so pastel like butterfly <laughs> and like yeah. you feel like you're floating when you look at it so I think that that would uh help me help me chill out <laughs> um awesome well yeah I think so that is that's you know really I think going to be helpful for for moms who are listening and you know and there's no right or wrong way I think obviously we hear so much about the pressure of being like you know a parent not only in the pandemic but a working parent in general of like oh you know it's never enough for your kids and it's never enough for your job and blah 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 and the beautiful thing about what we do is that we do get to make our own schedules we do get to make our own priorities to some degree you know mm -hmm. um and so we do get to choose how much how much of each we're lucky we don't necessarily you know we don't have like a boss like saying like why didn't you show up to that first meeting this morning and it's like well because there was cheerios everywhere and that was yeah. the situation you know um so so we have some flexibility and that is what i what i love about this career so when i do get frustrated about you know all the things of working for myself i remember the biggest benefit is the flexibility is the fact that I can just say, actually, I'm not going to accept that client project. Um, I, I would love the money or I'd love the opportunity, but I just, I can't, or I'm, you know what my newsletter, like I'm pretty consistent about my newsletter, but you know, like I was doing trend boards every single month. And then I was like, why, why, yeah. why? this is hard for me now. Like it was fun for me. And then it was hard for me. And it's like, why I don't owe anyone anything. Like, no, nobody is going to be like, oh, man, yeah. unsubscribe. Maybe they are. They can. It's like, see you <laughs> later. Do you know how much free stuff I do? Like, what's the, you know, so, so, but that's the thing. I, we get to choose. So mm -hmm. that's wonderful. Yeah. And I, I'm very privileged that I live in Sweden. I have to mention that, like, I don't think that I, I couldn't um, work at this chill capacity in America uh just because of the different living situations yeah higher cost of living and everything in america and sweden i'm taken care of mm. as you most likely know about the maternity oh, leave. oh yeah maternity leave right yeah we have 480 days or something oh my goodness it's split between the two of us so we wow. do 50 50 usually so i had that for each kid we get an allowance every month, several hundred dollars for, for the kids to buy diapers and things. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, you heard it here first. Move to Sweden, people. If you want to start your career and you're going to have kids, move to Sweden. <laughs> it cost me $40 to have my son. Oh my God. Yes. That was the hospital cost, $40. <laughs> <laughs> oh well congratulations to you it cost me much 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 more <laughs> I've heard yeah oh also, gosh this seems like I haven't I am able to be this chill because I don't have the student loan debt financial pressure yeah I don't have financial pressure I do live with my boyfriend who is an engineer and has a very stable nice income too so it's also that's another thing I can be this yes. chill but I also, I'm not a housewife. I, that's not my thing. I want, I always pay my half of the bills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I've always done that. Even when I was coasting and uh, no plans, I still paid my half. So yeah, 
Yeah, I totally understand. Yes. And I certainly have a lot of privilege as well to acknowledge because it is expensive, but I do, I was, I had the opportunity to build my business because of my husband's income and he had health insurance and, and yeah. et cetera. Um, so P I, I do always talk about that when I talk about income and when I, uh, complain about income and whatever mm -hmm. else, like it, it's, it's always with a side note of this is made possible. Like this is sponsored by like a working working partner and that's how I got there like I mean now I obviously pay and I mean I always paid something but like mm -hmm. certainly couldn't finance my entire lifestyle with with my income five years ago you know what I mean now I could but mm -hmm. you know it's it took a while and so that is that's definitely a privilege that I had and so work that um, you know, I get questions about people who work full time and are trying to, but they can't, you know, they definitely can't leave their job because they need that job and, and, um, and they're trying to build and, and it's, it's possible. I know, I know plenty of people who have done it. I've talked, I've interviewed people who have done it. Um, right. but, but, but usually yeah. at the cost of no sleep, no social life. Yeah. It's a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. Lot of sacrifice. Yeah. It is. Well, that is all amazing information. And now we're gonna dive into my bonus question. My, I always ask, or not always, but most of the time I ask a bonus question. And usually the question is related to income and money because I'm always trying to get that information out there. As we just discussed, I want you know people to know the realities of it so they don't necessarily jump ship on their job thinking that in three months they're going to have replaced their income or whatever the situation is and my bonus question um is you can find the uh recording of it on my in my service pattern boss toolkit um and so today's question is uh so I, I have seen you share your income information uh, in your newsletter and, and it was sort of a breakdown of percentages. And I believe uh, um, teaching is about 50% of your income and then client work and licensing mm -hmm. and stuff. Are, um, so is Skillshare um, bringing in that sort of like one to $3,000 monthly income or is it or is it, I mean, you don't have to give me exact numbers if you don't want to, though you can, because yeah. it's private, but, um, but yeah, what kind of, what's, what's Skillshare doing for you as a top teacher? Christina talks about her actual Skillshare income, as well as how often she posts her classes and how long they are, and a little bit more about Skillshare strategy in the answer to this bonus question, which you can find by heading to the link in my description to the Surface Pattern Boss Toolkit, which is totally free. And once you sign up and get the password, you can go in and you'll see a link with Christina's answers. Well, that is, is super interesting. And I appreciate uh, you going into it for us um, because mm -hmm it's something that I talk about with friends sort of behind closed doors or whatever. And, and, you know, it's, it's good for people to understand what, how, how that system works and if they're thinking about getting involved and for them to understand, you know, why certain teachers are on Skillshare and why certain teachers aren't, you know, and, and, um, somebody one time did reach out to me and was like, are you planning to put any more classes on Skillshare? And I was like, Honestly, like it's not to say I never will, but it's not like on my agenda. And that's because I make like six cents a minute and I pretty much bring home like less than a hundred dollars a month. And they were like, oh, okay. I didn't realize that. I get that now. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, um, it's just an important thing for people to realize and, and for them having heard this conversation, this entire conversation about how much work really does go into, into putting together classes and, and, um, getting them out in the world. So well, thank you so much, Christina. I have been, uh, I've enjoyed this conversation. Our, our, I'm sorry if I turned it into therapy session for me. About <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, um, but it's really been great. And, and I know that people watching are going to have so learn so much. Um, awesome. I will put all your information in the, the description. So, uh, 
Christina has a Facebook group. She has a newsletter. She has uh, obviously Skillshare courses. Um, so definitely check her out and follow her on Instagram because everything is bubblegum fun. <laughs> If you love learning about service pattern design and creative business, be sure to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram at eSilverDesign. Also, I would be super grateful if you shared this channel with your surface pattern friends.